mean, I started singing professionally when I was 12. So I've seen a lot of changes. A lot of changes. Um, but as far as the the transfers recording career, I mean, we sort of caught the tail end of a, of a beautiful wave. <laughs> when there were... Um, the record companies were really headed by people who loved music, and we were under the mentorship of Ahmed Erdogan and Nesui Erdogan in particular, and that was really exciting and thrilling and educational, and Atlantic Records in its heyday was historical. I mean, there were so many great musicians and, and, and people up there. In those days, there were, there were a lot of opportunities to uh, to play you know, at clubs. You know, you could come in on every Monday night and be part of a hoot nanny type situation and really work work your your music out in front of an audience and get feedback and meet people and network and you know the, the village was still great for that. Every performance is fresh and every audience is new. So the, the trick is to really do the whole Zen thing and keep in the moment with every with your life <laughs> in general, but especially with, with because part of what I do is is based on consistency. As a harmony singer, that is my skill to sing the same part the same way every night to sing the correct part every night, you know. And then there's um, you know there's a lot of room for a lot of improvisation and stuff around that. But basically, that's my job in this group. You know, apart from the leads and stuff. Jam sessions are good ways to shed and work out ideas and things like that. And also to work on your chops of spontaneity. challenge. I mean, talk about having to be in the moment. It's like, I've, I've struggled with it for years, and um, I think that there are certain techniques that you can practice that will help you, and it's things that saxophonists and trumpet players do, and everybody, all the instrumentalists do it. Scales, singing scales, singing modes, you know, singing phrases. And, and trying to get them to flow. But then a singer also has to develop a language. And that's hard, to find a personal scat language that doesn't sound like you're from a jazz choir at a college or something. Shooby dooby dooby dooby, you know, literally stiff, kind of stiff things. But it should flow like a soloist. You know, it's, it's a, a great improviser, like, oh my, well, there have been so many. You know, they tell a story. And that's what you should strive for, I think. I do a lot of solo work, and sometimes it's their concept shows where I'm doing new material that I don't normally do. I'm not. It's not with my band, you know. I and a singer. I will. Singers have to remember not only the lyrics but the arrangement in their heads. They're not looking at the music. They may be looking at a lyric sheet or a couple of little lyrics or something, but you have to remember the arrangement. It's not like a musician who can hide behind the instrumental who can hide behind the music stand. So there's a lot to be nervous about. <laughs> I had a group called The Young Generation, and we um, made records in the New York area, singles, you know, pop music. And uh, our first single was called um, The Hideaway. It was on Redbird Records. And I remember we did it, uh, we recorded with the full orchestra there. Just and one microphone, three of three with three girls, three 12 year old girls. We sat, we stood in front of the microphone and sang the song a couple of times, and that was it. And these days, with, with digital technology, I mean, you can have all that raw material of the track and singing, and then you can rearrange things in an incredible way and do things that you were never able to do or that were too time consuming to do. It's, it's pretty great. I love the studio. To me, that's my milieu, that's my place of play, preferred place, because it's about the music, period. There's no audience, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just the creation, and using the studio as an instrument. Mm -hmm. 